Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the association between child abuse and neglect and antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, when we talk about the study of child abuse and neglect, I'm going to refer to this concept as childhood maltreatment. And when we talk about antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy, we're talking about a disorder and an area that's studied, but it's not a disorder. So antisocial personality disorder is an official mental health disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, but psychopathy is really an area that's studied that's similar to antisocial personality disorder, but they're not the same thing. In 2016, we saw a study by Dargis and colleagues that looked at this question, and really they looked at specifically childhood maltreatment, antisocial personality disorder, psychopathy, and conduct disorder. In this particular study, they were only looking at males and only looking at criminal offenders. So this was a population that was sampled from a prison. Now, childhood maltreatment and all the various forms, emotional, physical, sexual abuse, neglect, has been studied with its relationship to mental disorders a number of times. And there is a link that's apparent between childhood maltreatment and anxiety and depression. And that link is fairly clear. The relationship to personality disorders, and specifically to antisocial personality disorder, is a little less clear. However, generally, we do believe there is some connection there. Now, when we look at antisocial personality disorder specifically, again, we're talking about a diagnosis in the DSM. There needs to be at least three symptoms present from the symptom criteria, and there's a few other criteria as well. So the symptom criteria for antisocial personality disorder include repeatedly engaging in behavior that violates social norms, lying, impulsivity, irritability or aggressiveness, disregarding the safety of others, irresponsibility, and lack of remorse. We also see three other symptom criteria. An individual must be 18 years of age or older. They must have had symptoms of conduct disorder before the age of 15 and the behavior from the symptom criteria can't exclusively occur during the course of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Depending on the research we look at, we know that about 70 to 80 percent of male prisoners meet the criteria for antisocial personality disorder, but only 15 to 25 percent meet the criteria for what we refer to as psychopathy. Again, psychopathy is not a mental disorder, but it's an area that's studied, and really Psychopathy has a complex relationship with antisocial personality disorder, but in general what we see is some of the antisocial characteristics from antisocial personality disorder are present in psychopathy, like being reckless. And there are other characteristics that are added on. So really it's similar to antisocial personality disorder, but there are a few extra characteristics we look for, including grandiosity, callousness, shallow affect, and pathological lying. Of course, lying is one of the symptom criterion we see with antisocial personality disorder. So in general, we would say that almost all individuals who would qualify as having psychopathy would have antisocial personality disorder. But many individuals who have antisocial personality disorder would not qualify as having psychopathy. So we know that both of these constructs, antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy, are linked to childhood maltreatment. The findings of this particular study, though, were fairly interesting in terms of the specifics, in terms of the factors that were identified. For example, the relationship between childhood maltreatment and psychopathy was strongest when looking at physical abuse and the antisocial behaviors seen in psychopathy, as opposed to those other behaviors like grandiosity or callousness. We also saw with these results that conduct disorder was strongly associated with a history of sexual abuse, but antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy were not strongly associated with sexual abuse. So this finding was a bit of a surprise because we usually do think of sexual abuse as being a risk factor or possibly causal, what we refer to as etiological, to a number of symptoms and mental disorders. So usually we would think of sexual abuse as a risk factor for antisocial personality disorder and by extension to some degree psychopathy but that's not what was found here. The relationship with conduct disorder, though, should be noted because conduct disorder, of course, has an association with antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy by itself. 
The last finding of this study was in terms of the relationship with childhood maltreatment and conduct disorder symptom severity. And what was found here is that childhood maltreatment has a strong relationship with the symptom severity with conduct disorder, and it's much stronger than the relationship between childhood maltreatment and antisocial personality disorder symptom severity, as well as psychopathy symptom severity. So again, what we see here with this study is what we've seen with a lot of studies when we look at childhood maltreatment and the possible development of other mental disorders. And that is that if we want to reduce the risk of violence, antisocial behavior, as well as a number of other symptoms, we need to deliver treatment early on in life. So early treatment is not only important, it may be in many instances necessary in order to really reduce the risk of antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy. I hope you found this description of the relationship between childhood maltreatment and antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy to be interesting. Thanks for watching.